Hello Glitch Lovers and welcome on a new episode. This time I want to bring to you a different technique I've been experimenting with to create glitch effect. Now please like and subscribe because it really helps this channel to survive and open a new project and jump on the Sparky Art Library and start downloading what you need. I've written there for you what you need, so a checkerboard, RGB shift shader, I just color shader and texture distortion. Download everything and create a rectangle. This is our first rectangle. Let's full scale it by click on full weight and full height and uh, create a material for it. Click on camera and extract the texture because we're gonna need it. Now rename the material just to keep tracks of your work, even though we're gonna work with really few materials, but it's still a good habit. Also rename your rectangle and now click on your material, turn it on flat, click texture and let's patch our first layer. Let's drag in and drop the Edges Color Shader and the RGB Shift plus our camera texture. Let's zoom in a little and connect our patch in this way. So camera texture, Edges Color Shaders, RGB Shift and then the output material. Put minus 1 on saturation to get a black and white and 0 on the amount on RGB Shift Shader. Open it up Zoom in on the first 2D transform pack and give it a slight value as 0,02 or minus 0.02. On the second 2D transform pack, give the same value or slightly different but opposite. And turn down a little the multiply first value amount because it feels too bright for now. You can also invert and do tips and tricks with the just color shaders, as you know. But now, duplicate the rectangle, so we already have it full scale. Rename it, and rename it glitch. Click on the material and create a material for it. Now, rename this material as well. Turn it flat, and click on texture. So we can now work on the second layer. Drag and drop a checkerboard and the texture distortion shader. Let's just organize a second dispatch editor in order to look kind of clean so you can understand better what's going on. And uh, so connect camera texture into texture of texture distortion shader. And then connect the checkerboard in the distortion texture and then the texture in the material. This is what you're gonna get. Now this is what we want. So let's try and change the values over here. Put a 2 in the repeat x axis and try with 20 or 30 on the repeat y-axis. Now, let's open the checkerboard patch and uh, let's look for the SDF rectangle and in the center, in the x-axis, turn 0.2, so we offset the center a little bit. You can now add a random patch and uh, because I want that value to be randomized, so kind of create movements over here. Let's attach a loop animation and connect the looped output. And now something is happening. Of course, we want to control the range. And so we add a transition for it and we turn it on back to 2. We connect it to center and we give it a start value as 0 0.2, 0 0.5, between 0 and 1 and then we start trying and experimenting with different values. 
this is the kind of lines and movements I want to add to our glitch effect. So let's experiment a little bit with it. You can always come later, but I always try and have a kind of a result I'm happy with and then proceed with the rest of the work. But it's up to you. I'm just working with slight values or even like 0 0.01, stuff like that. You have to really try to balance this part because uh, it's gonna look cool or just too static, depends on how you balance this part. Now I duplicated the patch for no reason, but don't do it and uh, just keep experimenting maybe with the y-axis but then is it goes off to the horizontal grid I like too much so probably we're just going to keep it just like this 0 0.5 to 0 0.5 so it's static and now you can go on uh, your glitch material and just try different blend mode like multiply and turn down the opacity a little bit or you can try screen or also add and all the different blend mode but this is just to understand what's going on and try to make work our two layers together but then we're gonna go even further. So click on the IGB shift patch and give it on the multiply at the end of the chain a little bit a higher value because it feels too darker. And um, now let's have a look at the checkerboard. We have way more options to control. So I wanna try to add the loop animation and see what happens if I connect the progress into shift because I need a little bit more of a movement here. So let's try to balance, to also balance this, this side of the patch. So let, let's try to work with the hole. So let's try to add a random and plug it somewhere else to see what happens. Here we're just trying to add more movement, not more, not less, but all these little things matter at the end of an idea of uh, a complete effect. And uh, I have to advise you to really play around with this part and just, got, just get the balance you're looking for. So we can now combine this two. So take the RGB shift shader output and connect it in the text to distortion. So instead of just having the camera distorting the checkerboard, we have the whole chromatic aberration effect going into the distortion shader. Let's duplicate the last time a rectangle because I want a little extra touch. Let's rename it scan lines and open a material for it. Rename the material so we're keeping tracks of our work. Turn it flat, click on texture. And uh, what I want to do now is grab another checkerboard patch and connect it into the scan line. You notice that this happened. Why is happening? Because we have worked inside the checkerboard patch and so now we have to rename it in order to have our checkerboard patch as native as it was. So go on the first checkerboard we changed and click on create patch assets and then convert again to patch assets. Now we can give it a name and call it checker, checker glitch or something like that. Delete the other checkerboard and again drag and drop the regular one inside it. Or no, open it up and delete all the random and loop animation thing we have and put back on zero point on zero the center because I just need straight lines 
and that's it yeah back to main now what you want to do is put a high value a high value on the repeat y axis click on the material so we got scan lines now you turn it on screen and turn down the opacity as you like it i like it around here and here you have your master glitch effect test it everywhere you want try the different combination combine it with my older tutorials in order to create something even more unique so i hope you like this tutorial love you all see you in the next one